Hello, my name is Josh McClendon and today I'm going to be showing you how I do mirror replacements in my videos, specifically real estate videos. So the first thing I want to say is that I'm doing this tutorial assuming you already know how to use Adobe After Effects. If you don't know how to use this program, I would say go and watch tutorials learning how to use Adobe and then come back to this tutorial. If you want to skip right to the main portion of this video, you can go to this time code, but I do believe it is important to understand why we do things, not just how to do things. So before I started doing mirror replacements in videos, I of course looked on YouTube to see if there were any previous tutorials on how to do that, and honestly there was nothing that I found extremely useful. So instead I used my prior knowledge of editing and it worked out pretty well. I started doing mirror replacements about 5 years ago I'd say, but only for photos of my real estate shoots. But then I was thinking that this could probably be carried over to video as well, and it pretty much did with a few tweaks I'd say. So this effect is not inherently hard I believe, but there is a process that I found works pretty well. So some people comment on my things and they pretty much ask why am I putting so much effort into these real estate video mirror replacements. And to that I honestly say one, I enjoy doing it, I love visual effects and I always have. And two, if you have the knowledge to do mirror replacements for this type of stuff, you can pretty much implement that into other stuff. You'll see in movies all the time where they're filming directly into mirror and there's several ways to go about that, but if you understand the basics of mirror replacements that can actually be very useful for a lot of things in the media industry. With that said, whenever I'm filming real estate mirror bathroom shots, I always film multiple angles because I don't want to lock myself into having to do a mirror replacement. Sometimes the shoot isn't paying that much so it doesn't really benefit from me spending like three hours on a mirror replacement shot. Also sometimes I just don't have time in the first place to do it. So you never want to lock yourself into doing a certain shot. Give yourself a couple options to choose from. Even though you know how to do mirror replacements, sometimes it's just not cost efficient to actually do them, even if you do enjoy doing them. With that said, let's get started on this tutorial. Okay, so as you can see, there are about eight layers, and realistically, you probably do not need eight layers. It just depends on the situation. In this specific situation, I have a couple things that appear in front of the mirror. That would be the faucet and also this vase over here. That's not always the case. A lot of times mirrors, just depending on the size of the bathroom, a lot of times mirrors are like up above. Uh, but this one happened to be more annoying and it took up the entire bathroom. Realistically, this doesn't happen every time. But if it does, you can do several things. And again, I'm assuming that you already know Adobe After Effects. There's rotoscoping and then there's masking. They both pretty much do the same thing. However, rotoscoping, especially with the new one that just came out, rotoscope version 2, is a lot faster, I would say. Depending on how good your computer is. So for the vase, if I click on the vase layer right here, you'll see I created a rotoscope layer. Nothing too crazy, just a simple rotoscope. Even on this, I just set the quality to standard. And the reason it's all grayed out is because I actually froze it, because if you don't know this, after you rotoscope something, it will always try to propagate the rotoscope layer, and that can be pretty annoying. So if you freeze it, it renders out the entire rotoscoped portion and then you don't have to worry about that anymore and it actually speeds up the process a lot once you get your rotoscope how you like it. So that is what I did for the base layer and generally what I'll do before I even add in the reverse layer right here is I will rotoscope out anything that is in the shot and that would be like the base or the faucet. What I found like for my personal workflow and time management, rotoscoping, masking out any objects that are in the foreground just makes it to where you don't have to worry about it later. Okay, so over here we have these two layers, the reverse layer mask and the reverse layer. So if I make the reverse layer visible, this is what you'll see. You'll see that I lined up the original layer with the reverse layer so that that's taken care of and once that is aligned what I will then do and you can either do this before or after I then will copy the original layer up here and then make a mask and if you look at the mask all the mask is really pertaining to is the door frame because everything else you can just do after the fact or before the fact so that's pretty much everything you need to know for the masking portion of mirror replacements, but before you even get into your editing application, you need to know how to actually film mirror replacements. And this is generally speaking just for a front-facing simple mirror replacement shot. 
Uh, this one is just filming from left to right on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K on a Ronin S Gimbal. Just filming left to right. And then for the reverse layer, this is where you want to make sure you're doing things well before you get into editing because it saves you a little bit of a headache. When you're filming a reverse shot of a mirror replacement, you want to keep in mind the speed and kind of the angle you were filming because you don't have to do a ton of work if you get that right. I don't really have to think about it that much just because I've been doing it for a while, but you want to match the speed and the angle. It's pretty much all you need to know. Once you do that, you don't have to like motion track or anything. It's, it's pretty easy. So if I play this clip right now, you'll see that I match the speed and the angle pretty much perfectly. So with that all said, I hope everyone enjoyed this behind the scenes look of how I do mirror replacements in my real estate videos. And if there's anything you didn't understand or if you want some more like information, you can always hit me up, comment down below. Uh, I'm going to be putting the project file and also the B-roll footage in a folder for you guys to download. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.